You may think that the phrase one cap wonder sounds somewhat derogatory, but it is still one more cap than 99.9996% of us will ever win. Heck, Mark Noble would probably be willing to take on all manner of I'm a celebrity inspired Bush Tucker trials for the chance to don the England shirt for just one game and win his first senior cap. So today's video is really more a celebration of those players who have won a solitary cap for the oldest national football team in the entire world. There have been lots of one cap wonders over the years. No, I mean, seriously, there have been loads. Six of England's starting 11 from their first ever international, and indeed the world's first international, against Scotland, never won another cap. So they're all on there. There were lots during the 1800s, to be honest with you, and there have been hundreds in total. But over the years, it has become less of a frequent occurrence. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at every one of England's one cap wonders since Euro 2004. Why Euro 2004? Well, because that way this is sort of part of my Euros build up. It also means most of them are still playing, and if I'd gone any further back, this video would last absolutely forever. There's a large contingent of current one cap wonders who will likely soon win another, and their whereabouts will be very well known to most of you. So, I'll pay more time to the earlier inclusions and then just rattle through those guys towards the end. Assuming you have been suitably seduced by that overly long introduction, here is every England one cap wonder since Euro 2004. Where are they now? Chris Kirkland, goalkeeping coach at Cone. In case any of you are feeling a little bit shortchanged that the title says 2004, but I've subsequently said Euro 2004, the two were England one cap wonders from 2004, but prior to that tournament, were Alan Thompson and Anthony Gardner, both of whom made their one and only England appearances against Sweden in March 2004. With that out of the way, I shall come to our first proper inclusion, one Chris Kirkland. Best remembered, I should think, for his six seasons at Wigan Athletic, four of which he spent as the Latics' number one, it was during his time at the DW Stadium that Kirkland won his only cap for the England national team. It came more than two years after Euro 2004, in August of 2006, just a month after Kirkland had joined Wigan, initially on loan, from Liverpool. He came on at half-time as a replacement for England number one Paul Robinson and kept a clean sheet against Greece in a 4-0 win. When Kirkland was just 11 years old, his father and a number of family friends had put £100 bets on him to play for England before he turned 30. He was just 25 at the time, pocketing each of them a cool £10,000. Now aged 40, Kirkland retired from playing football in 2016, and he currently works as a goalkeeping coach at Cone FC, a non-league side in Lancashire who compete in English football's eighth tier. Joey Barton, Bristol Rovers manager. A native of Merseyside who spent time in both the Liverpool and Everton academies before joining Manchester City's academy at the age of only 15, Joey Barton was a player of considerable talent, but even greater controversy and drama. Barton has twice as many criminal convictions as Caps, that's two for any of you who were wondering, but he did still manage to spend the majority of his playing career starring in the Premier League. His sole England cap came in February 2007, when he replaced Frank Lampard for the last 10 minutes of a friendly that England lost 1-0 against Spain, courtesy of a goal by a young midfielder named Andres Iniesta. Four years later, Barton claimed that he was still England's best midfielder, that's better than Gerard, Lampard and co, but no more caps were forthcoming. He retired in 2017, and following three years managing Fleetwood Town, Barton joined fellow League One side Bristol Rovers earlier this season, but they were relegated this season, following a 24th place finish. David Nugent, Tranmere Rovers. A real legend in the field of England one cap wonders, David Nugent belongs to an exclusive group of one cap and one goal wonders in the history of the three lines. That isn't what really stamps him out as a one cap wonder of distinction though, no, that is the manner of his goal, which came against Andorra in March 2007. Having replaced Andy Johnson in the 79th minute, Nugent was introduced at a time when England were already winning 2-0. During injury time, Steven Gerrard lofted the ball into the path of Jermaine Defoe, whose shot was partially stopped by the Andorra goalkeeper, but not enough. As the ball was about to cross the line, Nugent steamed in and slammed it into the back of the net. Defoe looked at him as though he'd just found him in bed with his wife. 
Nugent was starring for Preston North End at the time, and though he is still contracted to the Lily Whites, having rejoined them, the 36-year-old is currently on loan at Tramia Rovers in League 2. Dean Ashton, co-commentator and pundit. It's sad to think that David Nugent, who is just one year younger than Dean Ashton, is still playing now, meanwhile Ashton was forced into retirement some 12 years ago, back in 2009. A rarely gifted forward who came through the excellent Crew Alexander youth ranks, Ashton would have won far more than one England cap were it not for injuries. It was actually whilst on international duty that Ashton picked up his first serious setback in 2006, following a heavy tackle from Sean Wright Phillips, which broke his ankle in training. That meant his England debut was delayed by two years, arriving against Trinidad and Tobago in June of 2008. But just three months later, Ashton played his final game within professional football. He retired at the age of only 26, though his last game came whilst he was still only 24, that injury in England training ultimately having cost him his career. Ashton now works as a pundit and co-commentator on the EFL show and for Sky Sports, as well as doing after-dinner speaking. Kevin Davies, football agent. One of the Premier League's greatest ever non-scoring forwards, Kevin Davies belongs to an extremely rare group of forwards to have received more yellow cards than they scored goals in the Premier League. Davies bagged a total of 88 goals, whilst receiving 99 yellow cards, in the top flight of English football, across his 444 appearances. Davies is a man who tweeted, Can we have a recount please? always liked the south of France, on the evening that the 2016 EU referendum results came in, which he followed up with another tweet in which he wrote, Actually always liked Canada, time to move and get out of Dodge. Spectacular. And people say that the British electorate is uninformed. Davis's only England cap came against Montenegro in 2010, and unsurprisingly, he didn't score. At 33 years and 200 days old at the time, Davies became England's oldest debutant in 60 years. He retired in 2015, he then briefly managed Southport in 2017-18 before founding a talent agency called KCD Management, whose current clients play exclusively within the English non-league game. Jay Bothroyd, Hokkaido Consadoli Sapporo. We get all this talk about, isn't it amazing that Zlatan Ibrahimovic is still banging goals at 39 for AC Milan, yada yada yada. Well, yeah, sure it is, but so is Jay Bothroyd for Hokkaido Considole Sapporo, but they won't mention that, will they? Whoever they are. That's right, Jay Bothroyd, who is older than Mikel Arteta, a man who has been retired from football for over five years, is still going strong over in Japan. Bothroyd's solitary England cap also came when he was quite old, aged 28, in a friendly against France. Upon his introduction, Bothroyd became the first Cardiff City player to ever win an England cap, and the first Football League player since David Nugent three years earlier. Bothroyd has been playing his club football in Asia since 2014, but despite having scored 174 goals in 573 games for Hokkaido Considole Sapporo, Bothroyd continues to be overlooked by Gareth Southgate. It is a disgrace, Jeff. Matt Jarvis, Woking. Making his second HITC7's appearance in less than a week, that is more appearances than Matt Jarvis has ever made for England. Though, if you polled most people, I suspect they would have guessed none, so one really isn't bad going. The gifted offspring of a couple of professional table tennis players, Jarvis's only England cap came in March 2011, when he was in fine form for Wolverhampton Wanderers. He replaced Jack Wilshire in the 70th minute of a friendly, which England drew one all, against Gartner, and a year later, he signed for West Ham United. Jarvis picked up a horrible injury a few years back at Norwich City, from which he has never truly recovered, but he is at least back playing football now for Woking in the National League. Fraser Campbell, Huddersfield Town As a Hull City fan, Fraser Campbell is a man whom I have loved, hated, and then loved all over again. As a youngster, Campbell was pivotal to Hull City reaching the Premier League for the first time whilst he was on loan at the club in 2008, but the Tigers were unable to sign him on a permanent basis. I think that was a real shame, not just for us, but also for Campbell, who instead went on loan to Tottenham Hotspur as a make-weight in the deal that took Dimitar Berbatov to Old Trafford. Yet, he barely played at White Hart Lane during a season that was of the utmost importance to his development. 
Campbell ended up spending much of his career warming Premier League benches, but he still won a senior England cap in a 3-2 defeat to the Netherlands in 2012, despite having scored just six league goals in the previous four seasons. Aged 33, Campbell now plays for his boyhood club Huddersfield Town, and I still think he is a very capable centre forward at championship level. Martin Kelly, Crystal Palace. Personally, I think it is an absolute disgrace that Martin Kelly has won an England cap, and his fellow 31-year-old Crystal Palace defender and teammate Joel Ward is not. I am firmly of the belief that Ward is a superior defender to Kelly, and I always have been, and yes, this is a hill that I am willing to die on. I cannot change the facts though, and they are that Martin Kelly came on as a substitute for England in place of Phil Jones at right back in a friendly against Norway in May of 2012. Kelly was on the pitch for just 2 minutes and 39 seconds, which means that he holds the record for the shortest career of any England international ever. The longest for the record is of course Sir Stanley Matthews at 22 years and 228 days, which is Roughly speaking, 22 years, 227 days, 23 hours, 57 minutes, and 21 seconds longer than Kelly's. Kelly was playing for Liverpool at the time, but he joined Crystal Palace in 2014, where he has made just one appearance this season due to a string of injuries. John Ruddy, Wolverhampton Wanderers. One of those goalkeepers who just seems to be a bit too good to be a number two, John Ruddy made the championship team of the season when Wolves won promotion in 2017-18 before being immediately dropped for the incoming Rui Patricio. I don't know whether he has had any offers to become a number one elsewhere since then, or whether his family had just settled in the West Midlands, but it does mean that Ruddy has made just three league appearances in the last three seasons. Had he been playing consistent first-team football, especially in the Premier League, Ruddy may well have earned an England recall at some point during that time. His only actual England cap came in August 2012 though, replacing a 19-year-old Jack Butland, who became England's youngest ever goalkeeper that day, in a friendly game against Italy. Ryan Shawcross, into Miami. Ryan Shawcross played only two games for Manchester United, he only ever won one cap for England, yet he played 453 times for Stoke City. It's clear where his loyalty slide. Shawcross is often misidentified as some kind of brute or thug due to the regrettable leg break that he inflicted upon Aaron Ramsey, but he was never that type of player, as managers so often like to put it. Shawcross actually received his first England call-up on the day that he broke Aaron Ramsey's leg, though one assumes that the two were unrelated, but it took another couple of years before he actually won his first cap. That came against Sweden in November 2012, a game best remembered for Zlatan Ibrahimovic's extraordinary long-range overhead kick, in which he was one of six England debutants. Raheem Sterling, you may be interested to discover, made his England debut during that game after he had made just 20 first-team appearances at club level. That is the fewest any player has ever made before winning an England cap. Anyhow, despite enjoying fine form in the potteries over the years that followed, Shawcross never won another cap, and in February of this year, he joined MLS New Boys into Miami in America's flattest state. Carl Jenkinson, Nottingham Forest. A man who gives us all hope that we could still win an England cap someday. That's a mean thing to say, that isn't really like me, I know. But it is still true, isn't it? Jenkinson was one of those six debutants in that friendly against Sweden, which England lost 4-2. And like Ryan Shawcross, he never won another cap. Well, I say that, he is still only 29, so, you know, never say never. Just kidding, Carl. Do not get your hopes up. There is more chance of Chris Kirkland earning a recall. Jenkinson was playing semi-regularly for Arsenal at the time, where he spent eight seasons, albeit mostly out on loan. In 2019, he left the Gunners for good, joining championship side Nottingham Forest. He made just five appearances in all competitions this season, and the Trees are said to be keen to move him on this summer. Stephen Corker, Alanyaspor. It's not like me to besmirch the fine name of footballers on this channel, and I don't like to be too critical, but I must admit, I never understood the fanfare that seemed to surround Stephen Corker for a number of years. Cardiff City and Queen's Park Rangers both paid close to £10 million for him, just 12 months apart. Liverpool took him on loan under Jurgen Klopp, and Roy Hodgson gave him an England cap. 
I can think of at least five uncapped English centre-backs from the last 10 years who I would consider to have been much more deserving of a call-up, but perhaps I was just always missing something. Having said that, like David Nugent, Corker is a one-cap and one-goal wonder, with that goal coming in England's 4-2 defeat to Sweden in 2012. That's right, England have three one-cap wonders from that one game, which is the most of any England game since Ray Barlow, Bill Folkes, Brian Pilkington and Johnny Wheeler all won their one and only England caps in a single game against Northern Ireland on October 2nd, 1954, some 67 years ago. Corker, who has had problems with gambling and addiction, joined Turkish side Alaniaspor in 2019, where he is said to be in a much better place. And everyone at HITC7s, which is just me by the way, obviously wishes him all the best. He's not even 30 yet, so he's still got plenty of football ahead of him, one would hope. Jay Rodriguez, Burnley. From a couple of players who I never particularly rated, to what I'm often told that I overrate, but only by people who either didn't watch him closely in his pomp, or who are total idiots. And yes, before anyone questions it in the comments, anyone who disagrees with me on anything is an idiot. And yes, obviously I'm joking. I'm not joking when I say that Jay Rodriguez was a brilliant forward though, who, without a horrific ACL injury in 2014, which ruled him out for a year, would have won far more than one cap for England. As it happened, he never won another cap following that setback, so his sole England appearance came against Chile in November 2013, which I apparently attended but have zero recollection of, which is worrying. Rodriguez subsequently signed for West Brom in 2017, scoring prolifically in the championship before rejoining his boyhood club, Burnley. Aged 31, the chances of an England recall range from nil to roughly as likely as someone discovering that there is a ninth planet in our solar system that is larger than Jupiter, and astronomers just hadn't noticed it until now. John Flanagan, Charleroi. If you ever need a reminder of how quickly things can change in football, let it be that just a few years ago England had Martin Kelly and John Flanagan winning caps at right back, and now they've got the likes of Cal Walker, Rhys James, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Tarek Lamptey, Kieran Tierney, Max Ahrens, Aaron Wambasaka, and about 15 other right backs who are all about 10 times better than John Flanagan. I had a mate in school who thought John Flanagan was world class. We're no longer friends. Flanagan's sole England cap came in a 2014 World Cup warm-up game against Ecuador, which you may recall was the same game in which Antonio Valencia and Raheem Sterling were both sent off. Flanagan was of course at Liverpool at the time, but having departed for Rangers in 2018, where he barely played, the 28-year-old joined Belgian Pro League side Charleroi in November 2020. Ryan Mason, Tottenham manager. Both the youngest and the most recently capped retired player in this video, Ryan Mason was of course forced into a very early retirement, a little like Dean Ashton. Having become Hull City's record signing for a fee of roughly £13 million in the summer of 2016, Mason was involved in a sickening clash of heads with Gary Cahill following just half a season at the club. The collision left Mason with a fractured skull requiring surgery, 14 metal plates, 28 screws, and extensive rehabilitation. Unfortunately, after 12 months attempting rehab, it was announced that Mason had been forced to retire due to the extent of the injury and the risk of further harm had he returned to the sport. His sole England cap came in March 2015 against Italy, whilst he was still playing for Tottenham. Mason now manages the Spurs first team on an interim basis, having joined his former club as a coach following his retirement. He is still only 29. Nathan Redmond, Southampton. Unlike a lot of players in this video, Nathan Redmond has never suffered a serious long-term injury or some kind of dramatic fall from grace. He made his only England appearance against Germany in March 2017 when he was a regular fixture at Southampton, and he has remained a pretty regular starter for the Saints for most of the four years that have followed. In truth, Redmond has just been a victim of increased competition in his position, arriving in the form of Marcus Rashford, Jesse Lingard, Jadon Sancho and co. As mentioned, Redmond is still at Southampton now, aged 27, but the chances of him returning to the England fold seem extraordinarily thin at this moment in time. Jack Cork, Burnley 
Jack Cork can rival Martin Kelly on the short England career front, since his sole England cap came as an 86-minute substitute for Jamie Vardy in a 0-0 draw with Germany in November 2017. A really important player for Burnley, Cork could certainly do a very capable job for England, he just isn't quite on the same level as Declan Rice or Jordan Henderson. Having missed the first half of this season with a fractured foot, Cork is back playing regularly now for the Clarets. Dominic Solanke, Bournemouth. Those of you with better memories than me will be able to tell me whether I'm right or wrong, but I seem to recall that in an episode of Quickfire Questions before the start of this season, I was asked for my championship top scorer predictions, and I went with either Dominic Solanke or Adam Armstrong. As in, I said, it would be one of those two, not, I can't remember which one. Now, I was wrong of course, Ivan Tony scored a whopping 31 goals, but both Solanke and Armstrong featured among the league's top 10 scorers. Solanke became the butt of many jokes following his lengthy barren spell in the Premier League and the costly transfer fee that took him from Liverpool to Bournemouth, but I've always maintained that there is a Premier League centre forward lurking in there somewhere. He backed 15 goals this season, and by the time this video comes out, you will know whether he and Bournemouth are in a championship playoff final. Solanke's sole England cap came against Brazil back in 2017, so if he never wins another cap, at least he got the chance to play against Brazil. Lewis Cook, Bournemouth. York native and Leeds United Academy graduate Lewis Cook is a teammate of Dominic Solanke's and a fellow one cap wonder. His only appearance for England's senior team to date came in March of 2018 against Italy in a game that England drew one all. Later that year, he ruptured his crucial ligaments, ruling him out for close to 12 months. Cook has bounced back since then, and he has impressed in the championship this season. But one suspects he'll have to be impressing week in, week out in the Premier League before he receives another call from Gareth Southgate. Right, we're getting to that time that I talked about in the introduction of relatively recently capped players, most of whom are still with the clubs they were at when they won their first England cap, and most of whose whereabouts will be very well known to the majority of you. So, I'm just going to breeze through them at speed, starting with Nathaniel Chalabar. Born in Sierra Leone, but capped once by England against Spain in 2018, Chalabar has been at Watford since 2017, and he will be back playing in the Premier League next season. Goalkeeper Alex McCarthy was at Southampton when he made his England debut against the United States in 2018, and he still is at St. Mary's now. Fellow South Coast resident Lewis Dunk also won his only England cap in that game against the United States, which was a sort of testimonial game for Wayne Rooney, and he is still the captain of Brighton and Hove Albion now. In November 2019, James Madison and Fakayo Tamori both won their one and only England caps to date, and Madison is still starring for Leicester City, meanwhile Tamori has spent this season on loan from Chelsea at AC Milan. Mason Greenwood, Harvey Barnes and Dean Henderson all made their international debuts for England in 2020 in three different games. Greenwood's appearance obviously came in that infamous trip to Iceland, which saw both him and Phil Foden dropped from Gareth Southgate's next squad, though Foden has since returned to the England fold. Greenwood and Henderson are both at Manchester United, meanwhile Barnes still plays for Leicester City. And last, but most assuredly not least, the only one-cap wonder of 2021, thus far at least, Ollie Watkins made his international debut against San Marino only two months ago, in which he joined David Nugent and Stephen Corker in the one-cap, one-goal club. Watkins will be hoping that, unlike those two, that isn't to be his only cap or his only international goal, however. The former Exeter and Brentford star is of course still at Aston Villa, just as he was back in March. So that is it for today's video, but I thoroughly hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. If you did too, then hit the like button. Feel free to leave your comments down below in the, uh, well, in the comments section. You can put them somewhere else if you want, but people probably think you're weird look a bit irrelevant. Um, and make sure that you are subscribed to HITC7s and have notifications turned on by just hitting the little bell icon so that you never, ever miss out on uh, brilliant outros like this one. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram by the username at HITC7s on both, should you feel so inclined.